Up next is a fireside chat on future of television. As we all know, the arrival of on-demand video has changed the consumer behavior drastically. Now, TV will evolve as a personalized experience, and this personalization is all set to go wider and deeper. Thus, the evolution of TV will intensify in the coming years. To chat more on future of television, we have with us none other than Ms. Chanta Sekia, who is the editor in chief of Ad Gali, along with Mr. Anshul Elawadi. Who is the business head, Youth Music and English Entertainment, YCOM 18? Over to you guys. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, target segment, the youth, because uh, they are kind of a generation gap between the older one and the newer one, uh, which is coming up, and they are driving a lot of uh, things in the Indian uh, media and entertainment scenario specifically. so it will be a very interesting exploration of what the uh, youth of india are doing as far as content consumption and also driving the content scenario in india is concerned uh, so anshul uh, since you handle uh, the youth tg uh, what exactly is india's youth watching today and uh, how do you see them interacting with content you know with so many platforms available and uh, uh, such a huge transition that has happened to the digital platform especially during the uh, pandemic period so uh, what is india's youth doing with the content so thanks thanks uh, shanta thanks very much for having me uh, it's a very interesting question you posed if i knew the exact answer uh, i would not be sharing it with anyone <laughs> but on a more serious note um, you know uh, i think i think there are a couple of sort of broad uh, headlines that we can't disagree with right and the first one is that uh, young people are far more connected today than they've ever been before right um and what that basically means is that if the content is good they will find a platform on which they want to consume it sometimes that platform is a traditional platform sometimes it's something that's very new sometimes it's legitimate sometimes it's not right uh, but i think the 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 way we look at things is that if if you're able to create great ip right audiences will will flock to it and we've seen that in our own experience right so for example we just got done with hustle 2.0 the second edition of what is arguably india's largest hip hop reality show um and you know what we did over here was we realized that unlike other sort of uh you know music reality shows uh, the ip we create is ours because the music is original right uh, and therefore we said okay let's not wear a traditional broadcaster hat let's look at this from the standpoint of if young people are consuming music where are they consuming music so we actually use this to uh, populate the songs across multiple platforms uh, both streaming uh, audio streaming and audio visual streaming uh, that we were we had access to right and you'll be surprised you know on one of the world's top most audio ott platforms we debuted in their global top 10 global top 10 Now this is a broadcaster creating a hip hop reality show whose songs have debuted on one of the world's largest audio OTT platforms in the global top ten. It doesn't happen typically, right? It's not something that you know you're sort of you know, used to hearing. Um, what we did with with another show of ours, right, Roadies, which is a cult show, we said uh, a lot of young people today are, let's say, in the space of NFTs, right, uh, and and believe in sort of you know uh, sort of uh, these tokens as a as as a means of uh, maybe storing wealth maybe sort of uh, showing their allegiance to a particular brand uh, and we said let's launch uh, rodies based nfts um, and you know we sold out almost 3300 nfts within the first 24 hours right um, again this is a very unconventional point of view right whereas you don't expect you know uh, a broadcaster looking at these touch points as well so i think with young people the challenge is there's there are always many platforms right all forms all varieties um and they keep changing what you have to focus on is create quality ip and making sure that certain parts of it are available in areas where the young people are where young people are right um we have partnerships with snap we have partnerships with uh with glance um uh, we're already present of course on boot which is our own ott platform um but the beauty is that if the content is good uh, because young people are so connected uh, they will find their way of consuming it irrespective of platform right so just kind of an aside you had mentioned hustle 2.0 right um and i believe you had done something very interesting to promote it by introducing an ai powered rapper uh yes. for this right so could you just briefly take us through you know how you went about doing that 
Right, that's a very interesting question, actually. And again, it feeds back to your your point on you know platforms and and how how content consumption experiences are changing. Um, so we had some folks from our marketing team, really young, passionate people, who said that you know, um, like every other field, the world of AI has the potential to sort of disrupt the world of of rapping or of entertainment as well. Uh, and we created this character, right, uh, which is bot hard, um, and it is a very interesting character. It was an AI engine powering it. um and we basically you know you throw a word or a cue to it and it comes back with your with a rap song that it's created right based on its own sort of um uh sort of its own intelligence if you will um and it did phenomenally well in fact from what i understand and i don't recall the exact numbers right now uh, but i think in the first week we crossed our target for uh, engagements you know uh, that we had planned for the entire season so that's the kind of sort of you know impact that it had again a very different way for you to engage with a property uh very interactive very immersive um and i think uh, so if you know kudos to the team for thinking through that uh, so that's another example right so uh we've also now started seeing ai uh, being used extensively to create a more uh, immersive and personalized experience so uh, specifically talking of course digital uh, formats um, already use it in a huge way but how do you see this uh, helping out the television industry uh, can can this be successfully transitioned over here and utilized how exactly will the system work in television that's a good question shant and i don't again i don't have a concrete answer to it is it you know but let me sort of take you back to what we think of as the conventional definition of television uh you know i might be off by maybe a couple of percentage points here and there but there are an estimated 20 to 25 million connected tvs in india today right uh if you just multiply by that by let's say 4 which is you know approximately a family size again give or take a few percentage points here and there uh, that's about you know 80 85 million people are already enjoying the connected tv experience if you just think of the kind of data that's generating right and the kind of insights that's actually creating i think the potential to use any form of analytics and um uh you know uh, e- even predictive analytics for that matter is extremely high and it's going to continue to grow right um so in that sense uh in terms of you having insights much sooner than you expected much deeper than you expected um that that ability of ours as programming people is going to sort of increase tenfold or 20 fold in the coming you know i would say 24 to 36 months right um having said that i think the the you know any art form right um there has to be an approach which is a very human sort of approach as well a, a human intervention because it's very difficult to predict or to be able to say with certain uh, with a lot of certainty that this will do this well and so on and so forth right we're always learning such is the nature of our business so that is obviously the bedrock of our business uh but if you sort of you know uh, give it this extra firepower of 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 data and and analytics and all that i think your ability to create more enduring content becomes much higher and that's already happening because conventionally when you look at television you'd always think of oh this you know the uh, the the idiot box in my in my room uh, which is connected through let's say you know uh, a uh, you know is either cns cns home or a dth home or a cable home and so on and so forth but if you start seeing television as that f- uh, most critical piece of real estate uh, in someone's living room but connected through a different pipe let's say you know fiber to the home or or wired broadband um then the uh, the whole perspective changes and we're at the cusp of that already so it's only going to increase in the next two or two or three years absolutely uh, we've started seeing you know like a uh, kind of a hybrid uh, mechanism appearing you have dth players now venturing into ott yeah a lot of aggregation happening and of course uh, connected television is there and uh, the kind of uh, data that is uh, being generated and these uh, could be first party data as well you know with google phasing it out gradually so uh, how do you utilize that data you know of course you are creating a more immersive and personalized experience for the viewer on the other hand but what can this also uh, work out in terms of monetization in terms of brand uh, spends ad spends there so how can uh, you know you marry the two over here right so i think i think the way to look at it is that you know conventionally our ecosystem has had you know just uh, sort of two revenue streams right one is advertising and the other is subscription uh, right. on the advertising side quite obviously the data allows you to be more relevant and more targeted right and for every sort of cmo or or marketing person i think it's very important that spillages or 
uh, inefficiencies in their marketing spends are reduced as much as possible. So that ability to target uh, makes it much sort of uh, makes it a very sort of uh, required uh, you know intervention. On the subscription side, and and we we generally talk of data and its implications on the uh, advertising revenue side, right? Which is very clear, and I think there's a lot on that already. But on the subscription side, you know what it does, Shanta, is it gives you a chance to sort of extract the maximum value from the maximum fan and so on. So, for example, if someone is really a hardcore fan of an IP that you have, right, uh, there is a way to engage with them and also get them to sort of, you know, pay more for the same thing, right? Uh, and I think that's the sort of ability that data gives you. And you have a lot of granular insights into the uh, depth of that fandom, which correlates with the ability to monetize that particular fandom much more. See, traditionally, what happens to be a very simple example is that uh, if you're, let's say, um, you know, a Fitzwilla fan, right? Um, I tell you that you can sort of, uh, you know, you you pay a cable operator, you get the television in your home and you're watching it. And let's say you watch 20 minutes of it, right? I'm giving an example. Now, I have someone else who hasn't missed any of the 13 seasons that preceded the 14th season that's live right now. Who knows exactly who, which contestant won every year? Who knows exactly what the location was, what the person wore and so on and so forth. Uh, if I had that data directly as first party data or direct access to that through my own D2C platform, uh, I'd be able to look at that consumer or that fan in a very different way. I could possibly tell them that, you know what, we have this opportunity for branded merchandise. Um, I spoke about NFTs earlier. We have this opportunity for you to really meet and greet and be part of the experience and so on and so forth. So even on the subscription side, my ability to monetize that relationship becomes much higher with this data available. Right. Uh, I'd come across an example of uh, the UK market, you know, where uh, 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 this uh, pay TV operator Sky, you know, they have uh, turned their set top boxes into local ad servers. So do you see something of that kind uh, uh, entering the Indian market uh, anytime soon? Right. See, yeah, the, to, yeah, sorry, please go on. Yes, yeah, sure. because the technology definitely is there, you know, with, with such innovations happening so maybe in some other form it can work in india where you know a more localized uh, ads can also be you know personalized ads can also be served uh, as per the uh, user's history there and what he or she views right i think honestly i'm not i'm not i'm not privy to the specific <laughs> thing that you know the entity that you spoke about has so i can't comment specifically on that uh, but having said that uh, you know, there's a difference between, if you ask me for my limited understanding of, let's say, localized ads and personalized ads, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And I'll tell you where I'm coming from. Uh, is there scope to give people something that's that's more hyper-local, more specific to them? For instance, you know, uh, your automobile dealership, which is just two kilometers down the road, is giving this discount, which may not be the same as the same brand in, let's say, another pin code or another city. Of course, mm-hmm. there is. Uh, the question is, who is the intermediary that's actually managing the process? And I feel that will eventually have to be uh, someone who has the scale to justify that kind of reach, right? Um, now, that could be, you know, uh, a, a sort of, um, you know, uh, a larger sort of tele- telco platform. It could be uh, a streaming platform directly. It could be some some other entity. I don't see that going in the space of last mile operators because I feel uh, that they won't have the scale, right, uh, to really sort of be able to give you that kind of diversity. Uh, but certainly, other is that is that space right for disruption? Of course, it is, without a doubt. Um, and the one thing that you would see also, if you look at you know CPMs in India, um, uh, they're f- on television at least they've been fairly depressed, right? Uh, they haven't grown the way they have. The good thing that uh, targeting lets you do is it lets you sort of expand that value as well. So a lot of what should have been the natural increment but never happened for for reasons that we don't need to get into. Uh, will start happening when you start unlocking the value of this personalization or or, or hyper-localization, as you call it, uh, which works very well for the ecosystem. Right. So <clears throat> moving away from all this, um, I would like you to touch upon the uh, English uh, genre in India. You know, I mean, once a vibrant uh, uh, sector, uh, I mean, we really see it slide away. Something has gone wrong somewhere. We have seen certain channels closing shop also over here. So what is the current state of English entertainment uh, uh, in India as you see it? And where is it headed? Correct. No, I think that's an interesting question that you ask. You know, uh, we run Colors Infinity and Comedy Central, right? And both are market leaders in their respective spaces. Um, so let me put it this way. Let's forget, you know, uh, 
platform regulation uh, measurement what is captured what is not etc let's put all this aside right at a very at a very fundamental level where uh, the largest english speaking population in the world right um, this is a language that is you know uh, agree or disagree fairly uh, it, it's it's native tongue for many indians right uh, de facto native tongue right um so i think from a consumer perspective the need for english entertainment is strong robust and will continue to grow right um also in many ways this is the kind of content that uh, connects with with you know uh, individuals the world over so i think indians and india will be no stranger to this the pull of this content um so at a fundamental level that need is strong that market is strong now it comes to i think your point which is i think more the, what you're asking basically is the platform of choice for this content right um you know there is a secular move to consuming content uh, at a time and you know place of your choice right which is more you know in the on demand format right. um and therefore and, and that is bound to grow right even with even with english content like it is with any content to be honest with you you know any non sports or non news based content which is more naturally sort of uh you know uh tuned to consuming it on demand based on your convenience having said that it's a question we ask very often you know we've done a lot of research in this space um while that part is growing substantially there is a need for curation shanta see in a country of 1.3 billion people uh, uh let's assume you know a, a large chunk of which speaks english uh you know are you going to sort of leave it to of course there's an algorithm that might tell you on a OTT platform what to watch uh but there is also a very strong need for curation right uh we have seen this actually so we've actually tracked this you know some of the shows even colors infinity the search trends for those particular shows in india go up substantially right uh, where people are more curious about that we've seen conversations on social be built on that um so i think um uh, that piece is robust but i think we need to look at it very differently the uh, lens has to be reoriented towards i'm curating something so for example you know we put up some content which honestly on colors infinity which we didn't think would sort of is not traditionally what is known as globally popular content but it's amazing the way you know sort of fans have loved us have uh, loved us for it and we see that to multiple feedback loops is very encouraging and reassuring um so the um uh, in in my sense that piece is strong of course i think more and more going forward we're going to have to look at it a multi, at a sort of hybrid approach right which is both linear and on demand for it um and that the market is moving towards in any case for television right so you will see that it's nothing nothing different from that right great so you know uh, now to kind of tie up everything uh which is the future of television right with uh, you know on demand uh, uh, platforms growing ott growing connected tv and everything coming into the mix so if you have to take a 360 degree view on the future of television in india so what would that view look like you know where is it headed uh, what kind of shape do you see it taking everyone is talking about you know a hybrid model coming up and tv and ott coexisting and all but when you see, look specifically at television how do you see it headed and where do you see it headed you know uh, shanda i hail from bombay you know i must tell you the story when i was growing up right um hmm. my father was approached by uh, uh, approach to purchase property in a part of bombay that was being reclaimed you know and when we say reclaimed it is basically the sea and hmm. it was sort of you know dumping concrete and building buildings and you know we were growing up and we'd wonder about it and the joke that was doing the rounds was oh this is all reclaimed land we don't know how long it will exist for right um cut to about 5 or 10 years later that place blossomed um 30 years later and the place is still there and obviously costs a bomb uh, to sort of afford uh the point i'm trying to make is that's the thing about real estate right there's something about prime real estate that doesn't fade with time that it only grows um mm-hmm. uh, as awkward as this may sound the parallel that i'm trying to draw is with television you know as you mentioned see what do you define as television for me television is the prime real estate in your home right uh when i say prime i mean that nucleus around which everyone gets together that offers a large comfortable experience if you view television as this right it's only going to grow substantially now what you are referring to or what we conventionally refer to as you know the the death or, or of television and so on and so forth which sounds very good from a headline perspective is actually the change of pipes right and that's an other disruption that's taking place now a tv may be powered by a free provider 
It might be powered by a DTH provider. It might be provided by you know an MSO or a cable operator. It might be provided by a telecom or a broadband company, right? Uh, and more so, you're seeing it move towards you know the last that I mentioned, right? I think that's the future, like you mentioned about connected TVs. But television isn't going anywhere. It's going to be there. Uh, and television, as we know, is also going to change with time, right? Uh, you have to see it this way today: a TV connection in the form of DTH or you know cable and satellite versus let's say a connected TV, which is through broadband. Uh, the differences are stuck. On the connected TV, I can do so much more. Uh, with that same broadband connection, I can shop, I can learn, uh, I can be immersed in something far more immersive, and so on and so forth. I can also consume content. So television is going nowhere. Uh, it's very important for content creators to be able to own and create quality IP, right? Uh, how that IP is presented to its consumers, or the technology that powers it, might be uh, is obviously the world over changing, uh, and and. Uh, and that bodes well for for the entire industry. I think that's the way I look at it. That's a very positive uh, note, and uh, you know, uh, uh, view that you hold for television. And I'm sure uh, this conversation will be taken uh, further uh, ahead in the panel discussion that we have lined up. So, television is not going anywhere. It's a prime real estate that has sparked in almost every Indian household, majority of Indian household. And uh, what is actually needed to populate this prime uh, uh, real estate is uh, quality IP. Uh, the content creators, please take note. And that is what, you know, is a very major and very important uh, takeaway that we have here. And Anshul, thank you so much for sharing all these insights. And I'm sure this conversation will be expanded uh, in the days ahead in the industry as well and uh, through various forums. Thank you so much for your time and your insights, Anshul. My pleasure. I really appreciate your time as well. Thank you. Now that was a quick and useful session, people. Thank you so, so much.